بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Welcome to our Sunday Ta'aleem service here, Masjid Wardubin Muhammad Mercy Community Center. I am your speaker for the day, Imam Tari al Amin. We want to welcome you to our regularly scheduled Ta'aleem service program. We begin with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. <clears throat> we bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah and we witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. And we testify openly that no partners, uh, we say we testify openly of no partnership um, do we have or do we associate with God and we recognize God as the sole and the only authority. Um, again, welcome to our regularly scheduled Sunday Ta'aleem um, where we will share with you some, some thoughts, inshallah, some inspiration and motivation, uh, particularly at this juncture in our experience um, here in United States of America in the, the day uh, of uh, 2020, um, where things uh, in our life, as we all have been subjected to some unprecedented circumstances, things that are, have altered our normal way of life. Uh, but mashallah, um, Allah has willed for us to have the ability um, to be resilient, um, to maintain our focus as servants of God in providing the service to the community as we were doing prior to our lives being interrupted, so to speak, by the presence of the COVID-19 virus. So alhamdulillah. So our running theme here, um, by the way, I am, in the, I am in the blessing of our new masjid here in Hitchcock, Texas, uh, Masjid New Africa Center for Human Development, um, broadcasting uh, from this special place in which I will um, share with you some of the, some of the, um, some of our thoughts and some of the 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 the, the um, story behind uh, how uh, Master New Africa came to be um, in the recent weeks <clears throat> as this as this lecture goes on. Um, but what we have been running, what we have been discussing here, uh, the running theme that we have been speaking on is um, the Quran and crisis management the Quran and crisis management, emancipatory guidance for human salvation. And what we mean by that, or what we, we want, to, want to understand is that the Quran provides the basis of solutions for managing crisis situations. The Quran provides the basis of solutions for managing crisis situation. As we know, the, the Quran, as it was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon him, over a period of 23 years um, was the book revealed to him. And throughout the course of his life, throughout that, that period of revelation, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was subjected to many, many types of crisis situation. And one of the most immediate situations where that the prophet was urged to address was the crises of spiritual management. The crises of spiritual management. Um, because the Arabs of his time, prior to the advent of the Quran, um, they um, participated in what we called idol worship. Um, they, they did not identify with the oneness of God. And 
they devoted themselves to strange and peculiar rituals, strange and peculiar superstitions. And this was the government of their spiritual, the context of their spiritual life. And it involved a lot of things that are uh, not normal to us or not normal to civil societies um, in regard to them establishing um, what they would call their spiritual development. So all praise be to Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Muhammad Ibn Abdullah for that, for that matter was chosen. He was chosen to, uh, by Allah um, to carry the Quran to the people. And he did that in a way of, of recitation and reciting to them, but not just reciting the Quran to them, he was also, he was also commissioned to model in his behavior um, the guidance from the Quran. So when we say crisis management, the Quran and crisis management, the Quran mentions several different experiences of not just in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, but experiences in prophets and messengers that preceded Muhammad and how they dealt with or how they fared in the midst of crises uh, in, the, in the reality of their people and leading their people. Um, so we see this as the emancipatory guidance for human salvation. Emancipatory um, or emancipation, right? Um, emancipation alludes to the idea of freedom. And when we talk about freedom, Freedom has been given several different types or seven, several different versions of what it means to be free. Sometimes freedom is communicated as a thing that is enacted upon as a physical, um, uh, lack of physical restraint, meaning that you're able to move about as you so please without any physical restraint. That's one lack of freedom. Um, and sometimes we are led to believe that that's probably the most important. Uh, but the most important freedom is the freedom of spiritual spirituality, the freedom of the human being to develop spiritually. Um, because in essence, our spiritual life is the real life. That is the real life of the human being. That is the real motivation. That is the real inspiration. That is the real urgency in the human context that we must develop uh, upon accumulating or coming into knowledge, um, developing the spiritual uh, um, aspect of our creation all praise be to Allah so this has been our running theme and we can talk forever of how the Quran provides um, management in situations of crises um, because a crisis is something that imposes upon your reality and makes everything unstable it could be your social reality your economic reality your physical reality whatever it is a crisis imposes itself and makes that what was stable, unstable. And when something becomes unstable in the life of the human being, the human being naturally responds in a way that is seeking to bring back the balance of stability that was once there before. And in the midst of doing that, or, or until, that until that is achieved, that situation is considered a crisis. So the Quran comes to help us or reveals to us knowledge and through the guidance of Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, that is applicable to all human beings. Applicable to all human beings. So what is given in the Quran is not specifically given just for Muslims. This is guidance that is given to the whole of humanity so that humanity can respond in the way that Allah has created and designed us. You know, Allah says in the Quran, from Surah Al Asr. He says that it is He who this particle of certainty that's very important that precedes the khalaqna or the creation. It says, certainly we indeed, without a doubt, created the human being fi ahsani taqween, in the most excellent design or symmetry that is taqween, which is upright from qawma, which means to be upright. We were having a discussion 
I think prior to Jumu'ah yesterday, uh, Friday, <clears throat> and we were talking about the information that is given or put out in the public in the form of education about the human being. And when we talk about science or even medical field for that, for that, for that reason, you know, one of the things that, that, that I've learned to, as a, as a student, a graduate student, is to research information and go as far as to as far as to investigate or research what the highest trained professionals have said about a particular thing. Um, for instance, if I was studying, uh, looking for um, recent information on the containment or the activity or the nature of the coronavirus. Um, we can listen to several sources of information. Perhaps it could be news, it could be um, things that we're reading in newspaper articles or whatnot, but those, those are not conclusive evidences that have been studied by um, scientists who are leading in the uh, acquisition of knowledge when it comes to the coronavirus. So we wanna look, uh, study peer-reviewed information. Um, from active scientists who are actually working on things. So it's the same way with the human being. So if we wanna know the nature of the human being, or if we wanna know the purpose of the human being, we have to go to the origin or source of the human being. Well, who, for first and foremost, the human being did not create or design themselves. So we have to go to the origin or source that is, that is, that is, that is communicated to us um, um, by the one who created the human being, which is Allah, Almighty God, who created the human being. And he has revealed the nature, the working nature and the principle of the human being in scripture. And I say scripture, I mean not just in Quran, but that scripture which preceded the Quran. And in, in what we find in, in, the, in the scripture about the human being, is that Allah has created the human being in most excellent symmetry and excellent design. And then in the following verse of Surah Al-Ashr, Allah says, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَا سَافِلِينَ Then we debase him to the lowest of the low. So we have to understand that Allah has created us in the best construction. you already been created in the most perfect mold that Allah wants you in. It's just a matter of us acquiring the knowledge to develop us in the way that Allah wants us to grow, which is asani uh, taqween, uh, uh, upright. All praise be to Allah. So this is done with the assistance and the help of what has been revealed in scripture, but, but primarily looking, at, looking to Muhammad the Prophet as the model. The model in the context of the human being, not the model in the uh, external descriptions that are given about him. Not these things that are easy for us to look at and mimic or, 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 or pattern our behavior behind just by looking, as we say, from the outside in. But understanding the development of, of, of the nature or the capability of the nature of the human being from the inside out. So we, we understanding education comes to us, brothers and sisters, by way of information. And the information that is revealed to us in the Quran that, is, that makes us free, real freedom, the emancipatory guidance for human salvation, for human salvation, for the human being to be redeemed and saved, the Quran provides that to us. Because the, it is the Quran that relates to us the potential that is in man. Now potential is just energy without direction. And potential can be dangerous if it's not realized, if it's not cultivated, and if it's not guided in the right manner, if it's not influenced by the right thing. And the best way for us, or the best of what Allah Almighty God has given us to develop this potential is in knowing ourselves knowing what God has communicated to us about us, 
not what someone has communicated to us for their own personal measure of control. So this is what we are subjected to, unfortunately, in a society um, that many of us are left out of the loop of, of coming to the conclusion of who we are as individuals, as human beings, as servants of God, as created matter. And that was something Imam Waratuddin Muhammad rahimullahi alayhi, mentioned in a lecture that I read during the month of Ramadan that gave me more perspective on why, because you know, as students of scripture, we have, we ask ourselves, you know, we're, we're constantly pondering, we're constantly trying to figure out how to manage this crisis that we in. And one of the things that, that we have seen that has crippled the development of the human being um, has been the fact that, have you ever noticed that out of all the things that you see advertised everywhere that you go, people advertise food, they advertise services, they advertise entertainment, they advertise religion, everything is, they advertise government, all these things are advertised and you, in any given time, you can see advertisement right before your eyes. But very seldomly, if, do we see the advertisement of the human being? Or, or the, 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 um, the encouragement and motivation of human nature. Imam Muhammad mentioned something in a lecture that I read in the month of Ramadan that explains why we don't see it in a society like this. And he said that in biblical language or in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, when it says that man was created in the image of God, or God created man in his image, that verse is has been known to be received in a literal sense. So man took that verse to mean that his physical composition can be recognized as an image that could pass for a God, or God chose the, the physical image of the human being to be represented. Now, I wanna say this. Um, he said that, that that is because Religious scholars of, the, of that time, and even today, and even in some science, fields of science, they don't see that human nature, they don't see human nature as something that they can invest confidence in. Human nature is seen as something that is bad, deviant. But Allah doesn't reveal that to us in the Quran. As a matter of fact, Allah, Allah praises us and believes in the nature of the human being that he created. In Surah 3030, he says, فَأَقِمْ فَأَقِمْ وَجَكَ لِدِّينِ حَنِفَةً فِطْرَةُ اللَّهِ لَتِي فَأْتُرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِلْخَلْكِ لَا ذَلِكَ الْدِينَ الْقَيْمِ وَلَّا كِنَا أَكْتَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So, it translates, so, so turn your disposition, O Muhammad, he's communicating to Muhammad, so turn your attention to that of the Hanif, the Hanif nature that's in you, that Allah created in you which the Hanif nature is the natural inclination, the natural urge in a human being to be upright. The natural urge in you. This is something that Allah clocked into the nature of the human being and you had no clue that it was there. You have to, you have to be told and you have to discover it. So Allah tells the prophet to look to that nature in him. And that is the nature that is established upon the pattern of originality, the fitrah. The fitrah to Allah hilati, the pattern that Allah originated in creation, and He fashioned the man upon the same pattern, and He 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 forbids us to change it. He forbids us to try to alter it. So, in, in understanding this, He says, That is the way of life, or the deen, or the religion. That is the it's translated as religion, but it's it's the way of life. That is the way of life that is upright and straight. But most among humanity don't know. Why? Because they haven't investigated and researched peer-reviewed information. They haven't investigated and searched out information that is conclusive, founded in a logic that concludes itself, which is scripture. All praises be to Allah. So, with that being said, I want to read to you a verse, a uh, chapter of the Quran, a very short chapter of the Quran, just as a reminder, alhamdulillah, as a reminder for us to be able to gauge 
ourselves and how we are actually, um, how we may be, our potential may be stunted in such a busy society that advertises so many things um, that is that is so easily, so easily, uh, uh, it, it comes into our life and can cause us to deviate from the purpose of what Allah, from what God wants for us. So in Surah 102, Al Taqathur, Al Taqathur, this is Surah 102, Chapter 102 of the Quran. What Allah says in this chapter, A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, al-haqum al-taqathur, the mutual rivalry for piling up the good things of this world diverts you from the more serious things. Hatta zurtum al-maqabir, until you visit the grave. But no, you soon shall know the reality. And again, you shall soon know. No, were you to know with a certainty in your mind, meaning do you have an assured, if you knew with certainty in your mind, you would be cautious. And you shall certainly see the hellfire. And again, you shall see it with a certainty, with no doubt. Then shall you be questioned that day about the joy that you indulged in. This particular surah, as we conclude, let me share something with you about this surah. This is a, a surah that was um, said to be revealed in the early Meccan period. When the Prophet وسلم, peace be upon him, first received the revelation of the Quran. What the Prophet was dealing with, and one of the things that, that he was up against in dealing with the crises in the life of the Arab people of his time, was that they were infatuated with the acquisitiveness for piling up material wealth and material gain, right? They were, they were competing with each other for how much of the material possessions or things that they could that they could acquire you know or how many men that they could they, they can muster up um, um, to follow a certain tradition that they that they um, that they carried out in their society um, and when they when 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 we become consumed in the acquisition of material wealth it's very distracting it leaves little to no time for us to develop the higher development of ourselves which is our spiritual life because we become distracted in those things. So in, in my conclusion, I want to say, I want to identify some things that we may find in ourselves. And if we do, alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, we'll start working on them um, to start ridding ourselves of it so that we can become free, so that we can become emancipated. You know, Imam Muhammad gave a very insightful lecture during one of the, the, uh, the uh, Savior's Day programs. Um, I forget which year it was, but it was in the early 2000s. And he titled it, Moral Crisis in Community, This Time Emancipate Ourselves. Moral Crisis in Community, This Time Emancipate Ourselves. Emancipation, real freedom, is going to come through our own individual efforts to first free ourselves. To free ourselves from the things that are hindering us from developing the potential that Allah has put in us. Now, I can motivate you and inspire you, but it is up to you to take up the responsibility to develop your own nature or to develop the potential within your nature. So I'll say for this verse in al that is that is addressing the condition of the Meccan people who were obsessed with acquiring all of this wealth, this is classified actually as a mental illness. Yes, this is classified as megalomania or megalomaniac. Right? Megalomania. It's a symptom of mental illness that is marked by the delusion of greatness, of wealth, etc. Meaning it's like an obsession that one has with always seeking to have the extravagant things in life. That, that is something that we should be very mindful of. Allah doesn't have anything against us being comfortable or acquiring things that are, that are, that are quality. Um, but we have to be careful not to become consumed by those things. It's okay for you to have a nice wardrobe, a nice 
house, nice car, but don't become obsessed with accumulating these things as it will be very, as it has a tendency to cause us to leave off or deviate from developing our higher self. Um, and, and, and that's what Allah, and that's what God, you know, has designed us to, to model ourselves behind Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was a practical man, practical man, but in his practicality and in his approach to life, he was satisfied and wasn't consumed by the greater extravagances in life. So we, 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 we ask Allah to continue to strengthen us where we are weak and to reveal to us those things that are preventing us from becoming free, uh, to help us to recognize those things in our lives that are hindering us uh, from our ability to evolve as human beings uh, as he would have us, uh, inshallah. So as we conclude our Sunday ta'aleem, we thank you. We can't thank you enough um, for participating and, and joining us. Uh, we want to always encourage you um, to donate as you can. Uh, as we all know, uh, we have uh, uh, a link on our Facebook page where you can support the masjid in any way. And if even if you can't donate uh, financially, make dua for us, uh, share our program, share our messages, uh, and inshallah, God reward God will reward all of us. Um, so we have one special. We have a per, we have a we have an individual on that wants to take shahada. Is he is the brother on? Uh, sister on? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Is it sister? I think they got it. Uh, I mean, brother Terrence. There you go. I see you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you, brother. Is it is his mic unmuted? Please unmute. It's a little bit louder, please. I can see you, brother, but I can't hear you. Brother Terrence, can you hear me? We we want to be able to hear him. Yes, I can hear you now. Good to have you, brother. So, you you wanted you you you're wanting to take shahada today, correct? Understood. Understood. So. In, in taking the shahada, in taking the shahada, um, briefly, I just want to explain that this is a personal affirmation that you're testifying from your own um, own will, under no um, no obligation from anybody else, uh, but from your own uh, personal uh, desire to want to accept Islam and. In doing so, I would have you to repeat after me. Are you ready, brother? All right, I'm ready. Okay. Ready. All right. So, we we would we would we would normally raise our right finger, symbolizing that there's only one God, and we're recognizing the oneness of God. And if you would repeat after me, Ashhadu, and La. And la and la ilaha ilaha illallah illaha wa ashadu wa ashadu anna 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 
Muhammedar Rasulullah. Okay, and that is to say, I bear witness. Brother Terrence, uh -huh. that there is no God. God. Except, Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness, I bear witness. That, Muhammad that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Praise be to Allah. And that is the testament of faith which we call the Shahadatain. Shahadatain. And my brother Terrence. We want to welcome you to the fold of Islam, um, witnessing, witnessing without any, uh, uh, any, 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 any uh, oppress, oppression or urgency from anybody else. That there's no God except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. You are witnessing or testifying under your own strength and your own knowledge, and we welcome you to the fold of Islam as our brother. And we will, we, will, we will be working with you to, to get our information um, to help you fulfill your obligations as a Muslim um, uh, through, through the, the programs that we have uh, set up, uh, the new Muslim orientation program that we have. So we want to thank you, brother, and we ask that Allah bless you in your new journey of life. So as we conclude, I want to quickly mention, praise be to Allah, um, I'm excited to say that we are functioning, operating in our new masjid here in Hitchcock, Texas, uh, Masjid New Africa. Please visit our Facebook page for our activities and our uh, live stream programs. We thank you for your prayers and we ask that you also offer your continued support in whichever way is feasible for you. Um, and please uh, look forward to more uh, programs for us to come in the future on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, I am your speaker for this afternoon, Imam Tari Al Amin, and we thank you. We are in the du'a. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab nar. Our Lord, give us good in this life and good in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the fire. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you. Have a great day.